We're here today at Drumeo to talk about Lars Ulrich. And six Lars sucks! For some reason, Lars has gotten a bad rap. That's totally amazing. Drummers are at the butt end of a ton of different musician jokes, right? And to be fair, there's a lot of good ones out there. Check it out, man. You can spell it right. Metlica. We've only been together 20 years. None has been so horribly indicted over the years in proportion to their contribution as Lars Ulrich, the drummer for one of the greatest metal bands of all time, Metallica, in case you didn't know. So I'm here today to talk to you about six different reasons to love Lars Ulrich. Did you take all the soul and the life out of the track in the last no. album? The soul and the life in this track will always be there. It's the worst piece of shit we've ever done and it's not leaving this room. Wow. All right, reason number one to love Lars Ulrich. Memorable drum parts, and I mean really memorable drum parts. Could you imagine these drums being played any other way on Metallica songs? I don't think so. I think he hit the nail on the head with most all the parts that he wrote, especially for those classic albums, you know? It's just the way it is, man. He had great drum composition sensibilities, and he was also one of the prime arrangers for the band, too. How cool is that? Let me just play a little example of uh, a fill that he does in Sad But True. And it's not even really a fill, it's just like, it's a cool little drum beat fill type of thing, you know? Whereas most people would steamroll with a really long tom fill or double bass groove or something like that. Lars, man, he just go minimal and sounds really cool. Sad But True, little fill here. One more time. All right, reason number two to love Lars Ulrich. He was an inspiration to counts <laughs> countless, countless musicians. <laughs> he is an inspiration to countless of musicians all across the world for decades, you know? There is so much power in that statement because people like me, people like any of your favorite current modern metal musicians, at one point or another, I guarantee you, maybe 95% of the people, the first band they fell in love with was bands like Metallica, Judas Priest, Sabbath, and all that stuff. Even if they're like modern death metal people, I guarantee you, Metallica and drummers like Lars were very high on their list of inspiration. I know he inspired me to pick some stuff up and get going, you know? A lot of the younger bands don't really have anything too original and new to offer. They just do and repeat things that have really already been done, you know, five years ago by other bands. And that's where I think we're a little different because we try and put as much originality and, and sort of just different things into what we do than most other new bands. Most new bands try to just follow really what's already been done. Okay, reason number three, no ride cymbal? That's weird, right? Most of us drummers have ride cymbals, not Lars. I mean, he used it back in the day, but he got rid of it, you know? And I think that's kind of cool. It's kind of a daring move for a drummer to make, you know? Why did you use a ride cymbal? What's the main reason for it? Uh, I don't like the way they feel. They're very they're kind of ding, 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 ding. I like. Okay, so just to give you an idea what I'm talking about, I'm gonna play like a couple little bits of Inner Sandman and then I'm gonna do it on the ride, which he doesn't do on the record, and then I'm gonna do it on the hats and you'll see how much cooler I think it is just to stay on the hats. Let's go to the hats, baby. I don't know about you, but I think it's way cooler just staying on the hats. You probably don't even notice that that's what he's favoring in the song, but 
It's cool, it works, it sounds great, and I can't help but think, you know, the power of that song would have been lost if he was just sticking to the ride the whole time. So put that in your pipe and smoke it. All right, reason number four to love Lars Ulrich. Versatility. Man, this guy could play so many different kinds of drum beats, tempos, different feels. I just, just think about it, you know, you got, there's fast double bass runs in Dire Z. Blackened. Thrash beats in Disposable Heroes. You got slow ballad style playing in Nothing Else Matters. You know, there's just, there was so much really cool stuff that he brought to the table in terms of feel. He had like these really killer tom grooves and stuff like that. I mean, he wasn't afraid to experiment, you know, and mess around with a bunch of stuff. And oftentimes in music, that's where you strike gold is when you try and do something just a little bit different than everyone else might be trying, you know? And it really worked for Lars, it really worked for Metallica. So let's take slow ballad style playing in Nothing Else Matters. Oh man, for a, for a thrash metal band, killer. Great sensibilities. Uh, Enter Sandman. I mean, get out of here. That's awesome, right? There's there's some fast uh, double bass runs in like you know Dire Z or Blacken. I mean, talk about power, talk about speed. Man, just super deadly playing, awesome. All right, here we are. We've arrived at reason number five. Why do I love Lars, you might ask? What's my fifth reason, you might ask? He's understated. I really, really love that in a drummer or a musician, you know? When you don't just pull out all the chops and all the things that you have in your trick bag just because you have a second in the spotlight, so you better let it all fly, you know? I really dig that about him. Instead of playing like a really complicated, crazy sounding fill, he would sometimes choose to just hit the snare drum and really like pull out the tension of the song. You know, sometimes that has so much more power than I mean, come on, you know? Plus, not to mention, stuff like that is just like, it's a feast for an air drummer to play, right? You know, and that is, that's understated playing right there, you know? That is practicing restraint for service of the song. And that's, I think, a great reason to love Lars Ulrich's drumming. Okay, here we are. Reason number six to love Lars Ulrich. His personality. Believe it or not, you cannot have a conversation about Metallica without mentioning this dude's name. He is such a larger than life kind of a person and he's brought so much of that to Metallica. They're just, they're one and the same. They just are. You know, whether it's his just outrageous stage antics you know, his, his stance on Napster, which was revolutionary at the time, you know, which, you know, 20 years later, everyone's like, eh, hey, maybe it was right, you know? <laughs> and, uh, you know, just 
the way he is on, in videos, on stage. He's got this larger than life sort of persona and that kind of stuff gets you talking about the band. I mean, it's, it's all part of the lore of a band, you know, and you just can't, you can't separate Lars from Metallica in that sense. So I think that's a reason to love him. All right, so there it was, six reasons to love Lars Ulrich's playing. You know, if you didn't agree with me on any of those points, then I don't know what to tell you. I can't help you, you're just, you're just not a fan, I guess, you know? I tried my best, but I also urge you to reconsider your dug-in point of view. I disagree with you. I think you should maybe listen to some of those records again and then get back to me, all right? Take care. <laughs>